I'll go to attendees form. When I go here, I see this form, right? Now, yesterday we did is configure and form design, right? Where we could see we we, we were able to drag and drop uh, the fields on the form, and then we were able to change the settings of the fields. If it had to be a choice item, then we could go ahead and add choices to that, right? Yeah. So, so pretty pretty much of customization that we could do do on the form yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Now, let's talk about some <clears throat> um, let's talk about UI policies. Oh. Okay, I'll come to UI policies. See. UI policies come under system UI policy. System UI is the application and UI policies is the module that you have to access to get a list of all the UI policies listed within the system. Right, so right now you have 981 UI policies written within the ServiceNow instance. Right, and each of these UI policies will be associated to some sort of table, some table, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to look into and see if there is one UI policy for attendee table, you will get it here. So it doesn't look like there is a UI policy for the attendee table. Let's search for marketing table. I'll go ahead and search for, yeah. So here we see there is one UI policy for equipment request table, right? Can you see that? Yeah, 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 I can see that. Right. Now you will ask, what is this UI policy? Right? UI, user interface and policies. Right? Mm -hmm. The UI policy means user interface policies. Now the user interface policies are some sort of some sort of uh, you know controlling thing that you have on the front end. For example, I'll take you to a form. Just want to show you something. Mm -hmm. See, you start filling out some form of this kind, right? Mm -hmm. And when you select something, for example, Oh, it's busy. So basically, when you are when you are on the front end and see, on based upon some selection, you are enabling or disabling something, right? Mm -hmm. Just to show hide to populate fields on the form. If you have to control those features, meaning if you have to show dependent fields, if you have to make it mandatory, if you have to make it visible hide, or if you make if you have to make it you know, read only, etc. So these kind of property, if you have to do on the form, right, for any field, then you should be using UI policy, right? So UI policy uh, is is a component. Or uh, see, this this is the definition. It says UI policies change fields on a form based on a set of conditions, right? So if you apply certain conditions, on the basis of those conditions, you can change the fields, right? to change the look and feel or behavior of the fields. Use UI policies to show or hide or to make fields mandatory or read only based on these conditions, right? Mm. The condition here in this case is, we wanted to show these number of fields only when this primary application environment is chosen as after advanced or, I don't know which, which is the form that is the parent for, Oh, okay, it looks like when I choose NCR developer, the options will change. So 
either of these two, yeah, the options has changed. So when I change the values in this field, something is changing here as well, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I am doing, if I'm selecting something, some other fields are shown or hidden. So if you have stuff like that that you want to achieve on your form, you will have to use UI policies. Oh, this thing is like similar when we say uh, urgency high, and then automatically it, it will change on the incident form. Exactly, exactly right? yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. So accordingly. So, for example, uh, let's go to equipment request. Yeah. So, this is a equipment request form that we have created already. If I go into equipment request, <coughs> and the moment I select, see how many fields we are seeing right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fields we have right now. When I select marketing event, as soon as I select marketing event, I get to see this message. And when I do OK, I get to see this needed until and needed from. These these two are new fields that are appearing to me. Yeah. And that appear when I select marketing event, event as something. Mm -hmm. And the moment I remove it, those two fields are gone. You see? Yeah. Right, right. I'm going to select New Delhi. Yeah, I get this pop-up yeah. message, and then I get New Delhi uh, needed from and needed until, right? Yeah. yeah. And and these two are are mandatory fields yeah. because we see this a star mark. Yeah. Right. So suppose this is the condition when you build some application and you are asked to do something like this where depending upon some selection you have to show or hide some other fields or you have to you know make it mandatory or read only or make it make it optional based upon certain condition right mm -hmm. so the condition here is when you select marketing event show the needed until and needed from as well and make them mandatory right mm -hmm. so that's that's your ui policy Let's try to write this UI policy down and then we'll go and see in the UI policy itself. The UI policy would be when marketing event is selected do this show needed in until and make it mandatory mm -hmm. show needed from and make it mandatory this is the UI policy mm -hmm. right and there is one more show a message that you are showing. Right, so message is coming from a different component right now. So let's let's just do this, right? This UI policy will deal only with these two, three things, right? The condition is when marketing event is selected. Mm. Any value from the lookup field, right? If you have any value selected in the marketing event, Show needed until make it mandatory. Show needed from make it mandatory. So this is this is the business business case or use case that we have here. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and see. This is working right now. Let's go ahead and see how we have written this UI policy for this this form. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go into UI policy. All right. Mm -hmm. See. This is in the marketing events application, so correct a scope here. Table is equipment request, right? Mm -hmm. You have to you have to fill in some details to create this UI policy. Some of the details. So the, when you create UI policy, the form will look like this. It's a very simple form. Uh, let me do this. I'll open up a different form.
see when you create a new UI policy you will get this UI you have to select the name of the table so in this case you will have to supply the name of the table as equipment request mm -hmm. application since we have chosen marketing events application it will be within the marketing events application scope right mm -hmm. let's mark it active let's put the short description of the UI policy that we have created here is the short description and the short description that we have put here is hide mandatory needed fields until a marketing event is selected right mm -hmm. right on selection of marketing event we are showing it so we named it higher mandatory needed fields until the marketing event is selected right mm -hmm. make sense yeah now the condition when to apply and here is the condition for you isn't it yeah the condition is when marketing event is selected right mm -hmm. so you'll go ahead and pick the field here this is the condition field when to apply is the condition right and when you when you click on this drop down you will see all of the table uh, all of the fields coming in here in the drop down oh. fields from the table fields from the equipment request table all of these fields will be available here now you can go ahead and pick marketing event is right uh -huh. and you can put is not empty right so this is the condition when marketing event is not empty this this UI policy will be applicable uh -huh. right that's what we have done here let's go back see this is equipment request table tied to marketing events application mm -hmm. this UI policy is active active yeah you have the short description this when you go to condition when to apply is the condition and the condition is marketing event is not empty right oh yes marketing event is not empty <laughs> right Right. At that this time, it will apply this condition. Yeah. Mm. This will apply this condition, right? Okay. Now you may apply more conditions, like by doing and or oh. on, right? You you may apply more conditions here. Right now we have applied just one condition. Mm -hmm. Right, and the condition is marketing event is not empty. So if there is some mm. value in the marketing events field, then this UI policy will automatically trigger mm -hmm. make sense yeah it makes sense okay you can associate some script to the UI policy you can put some script remember remember the message that you you saw the alert message when we opened that UI policy yeah right so that yeah. alert message is coming from the script that we have. So mm -hmm. I just put a JavaScript alert here saying, remember to allow time for pickup and return of rental equipment. Mm -hmm. Right? So that brings you that message. Mm -hmm. See here, when I select a place, marketing event, I get this message. Oh, get this message, remember to allow, okay. Okay. okay, and that is coming from the UI, pol UI policy that we have here. See, mm. script alert, remember to allow pickup and return of the rental equipment. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, the condition is set. We put a message here, but we haven't made the needed fields, needed from and needed until mandatory right now right mm -hmm. so so you will have to first save it let's save it and when reopen it when you save and reopen it you will see a related link here mm -hmm. right and this is known as UI policy action since you have created this UI policy you want to associate some action to it what are the actions that you want to associate these two, Those are these two yeah. this is the condition for the UI policy and these two are the actions to the condition, mm -hmm. right? 
So you need to now define the actions. So you do you open the UI policy and you will see this related link. Mm -hmm. And here, what you have to do is you have to create new UI action. Mm -hmm. When you hit this UI policy action, you will see this simple screen, very simple screen, having four or five fields, right? It will bring the name of the UI policy, which is hide fields until a marketing event is selected. This is the UI policy. Mm. Right? It mm -hmm. it shows you the table that you are working on. Mm. Correct? Now it asks asks you it will ask you about the field name. What field name you want to apply this UI policy action to. For example, if you are interested in needed from you'll go and select needed from. And then you have options of making uh, options of making mandatory, visible, and read only. Right? Yeah. So you can go ahead and make it true. So this means, upon execution of this UI policy, the needed from will become mandatory. It will become visible. And read only we can leave alone. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we save it. Yeah, then we have to save it. Since I have already saved it, I am not saving it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Since already. Yeah. So needed from, see, this is what we have done. Needed from, mandatory true, visible true, read only, leave alone. Right? Yeah. So that's for needed from. Let's go and see the needed until. When I go into needed until, needed until is mandatory, visible, read only, is leave alone. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a very simple UI policy that you may apply on your form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. the rule of thumb is, if you want to play with three properties of a field, and the properties are make it mandatory or optional, the first property, mm -hmm. can you see this? Mandatory? Yeah. Yeah. I see that mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 So the first property that you are dealing with while working on UI policy is mandatory. The other one is visible, and the third one is read only. Mm. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's pretty much about UI policy, right? Mm. Although this can also be achieved by writing scripts, by writing some sort of scripts known as client scripts, but just to do, just to control these behaviors, mandatory, visible, and read only, you do not, you should not write scripts because the scripts will be slightly costlier than the UI policies, right? Because these are out of the box features optimized and when you use this, these are, you know, less costly than the scripts that you write. So for these yeah. activities, for these uh, controlling behaviors, so, so, the, so for these mandatory visible and read-only properties, you just use UI policies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me know if you have a question, any doubt on this. Um, I'm good, so I'm good. I'm following there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, See, the other UA policy that we have here is on the task table. Mm. And on the task table, the condition is, oh, this one is empty. This one is empty UA policy. No, there is one policy. Without any condition, it is making assignment group mandatory all the time so so this is on task table this is a different task table um, let's go ahead and create one more UI policy on let's say marketing events form let's see if we have some UI policies written for this marketing event form we do not have any UI policy written for this Let's try to find out what UI policy we can write. Mm. Okay. 
Let's try to write something. Let's do if if city is if we have selected city, then maybe we can show sponsor, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the sponsor field will be hidden. Let's do that, right? On yeah. this form, I'll go to UI policies, create new UI policy, and show sponsor when city is selected. So this is the UI policy we are trying to create. Right. And I'll pick if city is is one of these. If city is one of these, a, any type of validation. Um, yeah, let's put this. If city is one of these, then we'll submit it. We'll go here and try to find out the UI action for it. Now I'll create a new UI action. I'll go here, find out the sponsor, the sponsor. Mandatory true and visible true and submit. Right? Um, when I am here in the script, what is that? Um, let's put an alert message as well just to make sure that we are showing something. Something and then we'll update it. Now let's go back to the marketing events form. Let's click new. See, start date is that's a, that's a proper message. Now we don't have we don't have this sponsor field visible right now. Can you see it? Yeah, I don't see a sponsor. Now let's go ahead and select one. The moment oh, we sponsor pop up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. When I do none, okay. when I do none, the sponsor goes out. Goes out, yeah. Now select okay. Sanjo. Sponsor. See? Okay. Yeah. So this is but what. Here, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, on the sponsor, I see uh, there's no value. It's, it says default sponsor. That's that's a different script written for default sponsor. Uh, I'll I'll show that to you. Okay. That's a different script. That should be a client script that we have written. Mm -hmm. Let me see. See here, I am doing g form dot set value on a sponsor. I am writing default sponsor. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, Let no, me change no, because yeah. Let me change it to my sponsor and update it. Yeah. So it will now show my sponsor on the form. Right? I hit new. Okay. Now I go and select this and now you see my okay, response. Okay. It is a hard coded part. Okay. Yeah. So you and so is so is this default value. So you are controlling the behavior, the messages that you have uh, on the form by using some sort of a script. Right? You are controlling the look and feel of the form or you are controlling the appearance of some of the fields using UI policy. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Clear with UI policies? Yeah, it is. Right. Now, so on any form... So, here around... 
Yeah. So we don't need uh, intensive coding, right? As long as, as much as I see here. For UA uh, policy, you will not need intensive coding. Um, mm. Most of the stuff can be done by just using the out of box features. But then, features, yeah. but then, you might have to if if there is condition, you know, if you have requirement then you might have to write a script. So all the script that you have to write will, will go into this. And go into there. Yeah. So if true statement, if false statement. So within here, you can write your own custom script as well. Right. But for just showing, hiding, making mandatory read only, you know, you do not need that much of a script. But, you know, the custom scripts are allowed and you might write your own script here. Yeah. Right. If I go back and if you, I show you, see, on the marketing event form, if I am on the client script, so that yeah. brought me some script, right? That we had some script here. Not this one, the other one. Show message. See here, I'm writing some script within the onload function. Right, yeah. meaning when the form is getting loaded, I am putting all these messages. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's save this. So th this is this is the script that we are writing. This is basically JavaScript stuff. This comes from this is uh, ba this is this is ServiceNow stuff, but then it it is similar to JavaScript. So we'll be talking about this later. So okay. here we are showing this message by doing add info message. Then we are setting value on the form. This is the simple JavaScript where and within this variable you are taking values from the form and then you are putting some conditional statement here if a sponsor equals blank right you are doing gform.set value and the sponsor value is being set to my sponsor right this is this is something that you are doing using a script right yeah. right so you will see a lot of scripting coming in but for right now, for UI policy, you will not require that much of UI uh, that that much of script written for UI policies, unless there is some real complex requirement that you have. Mm -hmm. Right now, see the message changed. Sample message, and it says this is output of a script, the one that we just changed. And so we just put a message here, and it says this is an output of a script. So do we control it by using the script there, right? Now, when you select, you get this pop-up message, right? And this is also a result of the script that you have written. And the, the default text that you see here, this is also output of the script that you have written. All right. All right? Now, if you have to do date validations, for example, if you have to check if start date is greater than end date or not. For example, if you have to fail the condition here, here the start date is 16th August 2016 and the end date is August 1st, 2016, right? Mm -hmm. So this is quite unusual, right? Start date cannot be yeah. passed in right, there, right. right? So if you have to do some sort of validation on this, you will be using client script to validate and, you know, before submitting, what you will do is you will apply some validation and check if the validation passes or not. If it does not pass, you will not allow the user to submit the request. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So for that, you will have this client script coming in. And this is a scripting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Using client script, you will control the behavior of, uh, you will control some, you will do some calculation on the fields available on the form right mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you can do all sorts of validation on the form okay 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 mm 
let's name it date checker yeah. and I'll, I'll do it on on submit the moment I select on submit I get a signature here yeah. see I'll get rid of this now I go and select on submit hmm. you get the signature here hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah so I'll put a description here do date validation right and I'll do something like where start date equals g underscore form g form is a object an object that is used to get values or set values on the form mm. right mm. get value no. I don't know the field name start underscore date should be probably the field name I, I quickly check it how do we how do we see the name of the field right, because in in code you have to access this field with the field name right right not with the label you cannot access the name of the uh, you cannot access this field with the label you have to get the name of this field to get the name of the field you have to hover on the label field right click and get the field name sure okay start underscore date right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the field name is start underscore date mm -hmm. let's get this value I'll also get where end date equals g underscore form dot get value and I'll try to find out the field name here for end date which is end underscore date right yeah. so I'll put yeah. end underscore date right yeah. And you may like to first of all show whatever value you get right so we'll come to comparison later let's just whatever value you get here within this variables right let's just mm -hmm. pop these out right let's just show these variables when you submit the form so this is the default text. Let's put some date. Let's select okay. this. Right. So let's submit it. When we submit it, see it is popping up the first date, which is start date. Yeah. Two eight sixteen, and it will again pop out, and that will bring out end date, which is again two eight sixteen. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and let's try some different dates. So let's do 31 and 19. Place name. See, it gives you 31, 7, 2016. Yeah, yeah. It gives you 19, 8, yeah, yeah, that's okay. 2016. Yeah. Okay. Not the end date, okay. Now. What if we change like uh, start date 10 and end date the backward date sorry uh, for example if we give a wrong uh, wrong date uh-huh actually this one okay this one is to show something else okay. yeah I got it, got it, yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah now yeah. let's do some validation uh, we'll put F yeah, this is what I am trying to say. Yeah, if end date is less than is on our start date, then uh, you may right. you may alert and say yeah end date should not be something. All right. Yeah. And then you will do return false or something. Mm. 
You get it? Start date cannot be past the start. Sorry, the message is wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> message is wrong. Be past the start. Yeah. yeah, so it is not allowing you to submit now. Let's change yeah. let's change that message for the message, yeah. Yeah, message is wrong, so it's interesting. Right? So you just applied a simple script to do date validation and now you can see that if 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 user does not comply on the form, if you do not follow the rules that you have set, right, it will not allow you to submit the form. Yeah. So some sort of validation that you have put in place. Yeah. Okay? That's right. a real life application, yeah. Right. It is not letting you submit. Mm. Right? Otherwise you, right. you you could have submitted and put wrong details on on the on the record, right? On the record, yeah. So what we have learned today is two things. Number one mm -hmm. is to control the appearance of the fields on the form. Appearance meaning make mm -hmm. it mandatory, read only, you know, show, hide, etc. So that's that's mm -hmm. using UI policies and UI action, policy action. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. thing that we learned is to validate fields on the form using client script. That's true. Right. Now mm -hmm. we saw one type of client script, which is submit. We also saw another type of client script, which was on load. But I'm not sure if you, if you are you you paid attention to it. See, this was an onload script that we were trying, mm -hmm. where we provided this my sponsor text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and, that. Yeah. And the default text, right? Yeah. So that is happening yeah. on the onload client script, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever yeah. the form is loaded, this script will be executed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. The That's other cool. one, the date checker, this script will be executed whenever the form is submitted. Mm -hmm. See? So there are four types of four types of client script that you have on load, on submit, on, on change, on. and on sell edit. Sell edit. Right? So according to the need that you have, you may check uh, you may choose what type of client script you have to create on the form. Hmm. Right? See the signatures? When I create a new client script and I choose the type of the script, for example, when I select on submit, I get this function hmm. on submit. When I select hmm. on load, I get this function on load. When I select on change, it gives me the on change signature and it also gives me the old value, new value, the name of the control is loading and is template, right? And it gives you the comparison statement here, mm. right? So this is for on change. If you are working on on sell edit, it will give you the sys ID, the table name, the old value, new value of the cell, right? So that you can play with any particular cell. For example, mm -hmm. if you were to apply this on cell edit to any particular field on the form and the user is editing the cell, then only this UI, uh, this, this client script will be executed. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, client scripts are basically of four types. On cell edit, on change, right. yeah. on load, and on submit. On submit yeah. Right. According to your requirement, you will select the client script type. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now see, yeah. relevant fields appear on the form according to the selection of the type. For example, the field name field, the field name here, if you go yeah. and do on submit, you will not see the field name. That's gone. Right. Right? Because that's not required. On load, that's not required. On change, you, you need that. Mm. On sell edit, you need that. Right? Because on sell edit and on change is dependent upon any particular field. Right? right. If we do this, it means that 
this client script will be applicable on change of the budget field right if I do this yeah. this change this client script will be applicable on change of number of attendees expected field right does it make sense yeah it makes sense yeah similarly this type uh, this client script will be applicable whenever number of attendees expected cell is getting edited make sense Makes sense. Yeah. Let's do this. If you put some message here, it will show you when you type in within the number of attendees expected. Let's submit it. Go to marketing. What was that on sale change, right? Yeah. I think we need to call the callback function. We need to write it there. So the idea is, so you use the appropriate client script type and then you associate whatever action that you want to associate it. We need to change the script slightly mm. on the client script to get that working, right? So I think we, we should not take more topics today. I, I need you to practice on these stuff. Uh, yeah, sure. Right? So I'll, I'll ask you to go practice it, do the assignments, uh, we have mm -hmm. we did up to five yesterday, right? So we'll be doing. Yeah. Let me see. It should be on the email. Mm 